is the Old Testament survey, lesson number five, and we'll look at uh, Genesis chapter seven. We've made it all the way to Genesis chapter seven. We've talked about Adam, we've talked about Noah, and the, the Old Testament is laid out several, well, I guess lesson number one, lesson number two will tell you, uh, give you some overview of what, how the Old Testament is laid out. But what we are doing is showing you the different dispensations that are involved in the Old Testament. The book of Genesis, remember this, there's 4,000 years from Adam to the day Jesus is born. That's 4,000 plus. 4,004 years, they say, according to Usher's chronology. The book of Genesis covers 2,000 years. And that's half of your Old Testament. So once you get through the book of Genesis, you get all the way through a fellow by the name of Joseph. And Joseph dies at the end of the book of Genesis. And that covers half of your Old Testament. You're done as far as your... Now, your reading is not done, obviously. But once you start Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and so on and so forth, you're getting more detail and more detail to get the kings and the judges, or the judges and the kings and so on and so forth, all the way to Moses, to the law. And the law will carry you all the way just a little past the cross before the church starts. And there's the New Testament uh, when it starts. So all of your Old Testament, you've got the book of Genesis, you'll notice Genesis 1, 2, and 3 is your innocence, your dispensation of innocence. 4 through 8 is your dispensation of conscience. 9 through 11 is your government, human government. And... Uh, and then your patriarchs start with Hebrews chapter 12, a man by the name of Abraham, and goes all the way to Exodus 19. So you've got four different dispensations in the book of Genesis alone. And the most of the rest of your Old Testament is under the law, under the Ten Commandments, under the Mosaic Law, uh, under the Mosaic Covenant. And so... That's how that thing is laid out. Now, what we've got to is the flood. In Genesis chapter number 7, verse 1, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all of thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Now, in chapter number 7, what you'll have is God telling Noah to come into the ark. Now, now notice this, come into the ark. One of the reasons he says come into the ark is because God was already inside the ark. Notice God didn't say, Noah, go into the ark. God says come into the ark because God was on the inside. And God shut that door. Now what Noah did, he preached for 120 years and got eight people, including himself, on the ark. He preached for 820 years while he's building this ark and uh, you have to understand, nobody's ever seen rain come out of the sky before. The ground was, um, uh, from, the, from the dew of the ground is how the, the grass was watered. Nobody has ever seen rain come out of the sky. So when a preacher of righteousness comes on the scene and goes, it's fixing to rain, 40 days and 40 nights, people's like, well, what's that? Why are you building this big boat? There's no water around here that will house this big boat. Uh, this boat was uh, approximately about 450 feet long, uh, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Had three stories in it. Had a window at the top, three stories, 450 feet long, 75 feet wide. And uh, they spent a little less than a year on this ark. A little less on the, uh, what the year, uh, uh, than a year on this ark. Now, you say, well, how in the world, how in the world to get all these animals and all these people on the ark? Well, now think about this. That is a million and a half cubic feet. Um, and so at that particular time, and a lot of people say, well, how'd you get two elephants and two giraffes? And Have you ever thought about this? Why does everybody think that Noah got the biggest elephant he could find? <laughs> People don't think. What about getting two baby elephants? What about getting two baby giraffes? You all think, you know, and I understand you see the stories of all these big animals are coming up. And, and all of these you know, scientists say, oh, that's impossible. No, it's not. Because 
And, and notice, you have to understand something else. I'm trying to hurry. But you have to realize something else. You didn't have every kind of species on the ark. Two of every kind. He took two, a pair. You ever know? Well, I ain't got time to get on that. <laughs> but notice he didn't take two males and two females. Why? It just don't work. You got it? A pair of unclean. Seven pairs of clean animals. So not only did you have, you had a pair of unclean, you had seven pairs of clean animals. Now, well, well, they figure that by, uh, well, the book of Leviticus tell you all of that, what's considered a clean animal and an unclean animal. Uh, and uh, that's what got on the ark. Uh, a million and five or 500,000 cubic feet of space. Three stories, eight people, and that many animals for less than a year. And uh, that ark landed a, a little less than a year later on Mount Ariat. And eight people get off the ark in Genesis chapter number eight and start a new beginning. The number eight in the Bible is new beginning. Seven is completion. Eight is new beginning. Then chapter nine is fruit. Verse one, he says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And, uh, and so you have Noah getting his family on the ark Eight people get off the ark in Genesis chapter number eight, start a brand new beginning. They start a brand new beginning with eight different people, or eight people. Noah, he had three sons, and you got uh, four males, four females. They all have wives. They get off. In Genesis chapter number nine, you'll notice in verse number, all oh, about verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood, neither shall there be any more of the flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is a token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you and for, and for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of the covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring the cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood and destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living, living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. God established a covenant with Noah, said, I'll promise I'll never destroy the earth again with water. The earth is going to be destroyed on the tail end, and it will be destroyed by fire. It'll, the elements will melt with fervent heat and uh, it'll be the atomic bomb. It'll probably be some type of war that goes on down there that'll destroy the whole earth. But don't worry about that. If you're saved, you're going up right here at the red line and so you have to worry about that. But uh, if you plan on staying around, you may want to get you an asbestos suit because uh, you're going to need it. And you may not survive after that. But uh, anyway, now what happens is you have in Genesis chapter 9, you move into human government. You say, why does God do that? All right, listen. Each dispensation has a different set of rules. I explained last week that I have three children. All of them are different ages. I love them all the same. But all of them, when they were all living at home, they had different sets of rules. Some of them had to be at a certain time. Some of them had to, to put the cell phone up at a certain time. And uh, some of them still do. Uh, and it's just different rules, house rules for different people. Uh, based upon their knowledge and, and whatever. God does the same thing. Innocence, man fails. Every one of these ends in failure. The, the age of innocence ends in the fall. Sin comes in the world. Conscience starts, the age of conscience. And uh, let your conscience be your guide. You had um, uh, Cain and Abel, those guys. Seth and all the generations of those. And then you had Noah. That covers about four chapters. Uh, that lasts about 1,656 years. And that one ends in a destruction, flood. This one ends with a fall. This one ends with a flood. And then another dispensation starts in Genesis chapter 9 with eight people. They start human government. You say, preacher, what, um, what starts now? <coughs> well, up until now, you had no nations. Up until now, there were no seasons. Now, in Genesis chapter number 9, you've got four seasons. 
You say, how'd that happen? Well, the water that dispersed. You say, where'd the water come from that came from, uh, that flooded the earth? Well, the Bible says the fountains of the deep broke open. Now, you remember last, well, a couple weeks ago when we were talking about the Garden of Eden and the water canopy. Well, the water from Noah's flood came from that water that's above the firmament and flooded this earth. The fountains of the deep, there's water underneath us, there's water above us, and that thing came down and flooded the whole earth. This, the water uh, in Noah's flood, if you want to know, you can see the water from Noah's flood. You go to the Atlantic Ocean, you go to the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, all those, that's Noah's flood water. It's where it uh, is, is now uh, sitting. Uh, God divided the land mass and put water in between us. What will happen is you've got Noah and his three sons. <coughs> you had seasons started. Up until now, no meat eaters. Now, in this dispensation, you're starting to see meat eaters. No blood. You couldn't consume blood. But now you could have uh, meat. Man was dominion over all of the beasts. In Genesis 9-5, you'll see capital punishment instituted. And we're not going to get into the big, big debate about capital punishment tonight, but it started in Genesis chapter number 9 and verse number 5. You haven't seen capital punishment until now. If you remember, Cain killed his brother. There, were, there was no capital punishment. God put a mark on Cain and, uh, and let him live. Here in Genesis 9, that's not the case anymore. Verse 5, And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And that's in Genesis chapter number 9. nine. And, and I'll just go on and say this. And you don't have to, you know, if you want to believe the Bible, that's, that's, that's a good thing. But if you don't, that's fine too. But capital punishment has not changed. Right. Nowhere in the Bible has God changed what He established in Genesis chapter 9. Matter of fact, He reiterates it in, Re in Romans chapter 13. And He tells you uh, the sword, well, um, you don't take up the sword in vain. What do you do with a sword? You don't slap them on the hand. You do one thing with a sword. And so... That has never been changed. Now we can debate it and we don't, we're not going to because I ain't got time. But uh, even in Romans 13, which is over here, is the same thing as in Genesis 9. God has never changed it. Uh, and it's still established. So that's one thing you can uh, remember. Now, here's something. Genesis chapter number 10. Noah's got three boys. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You'll find it in Genesis chapter number 10. Uh, look at verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. And that gives you the generations of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Um, <coughs> something happened in Genesis chapter number 10. I don't know what all happened. And I'm not going to have time to read it right now. But um, Japheth, after whatever happened in Genesis chapter 10, whatever it was, I ain't got time to read it right now, but you can read it. This is a survey, so you read it when you get home. These boys split. Japheth went to the north and migrated up to the north and established Europe. Ham went to the south. Japheth went to the north, Europe. Ham went to the south, Af uh, Africa, Egypt. And then Shem went to the east and established Asia. And there's your three groups uh, that, that this thing all goes back to. Those three boys. And those boys uh, dispersed. One went north, Japheth. There's where uh, your uh, European, what we call Europeans, and, uh, and then your Asians, and then the, the African, uh, Egyptian, you know, all from Ham all the way down to the south. And so that covers 
uh, those three groups of folks. Um, then, in Genesis chapter number 11, Genesis chapter number 11, here's what we have, the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, what happens in Genesis chapter number 11 is man wants to build a tower all the way up to God. Now I find this story very interesting and very humorous. A lot of people don't think God's got a sense of humor, but it really does. Genesis chapter number 11, man got together. Now pay attention. Man, all one language, all got together and they said, let's build a tower up to God. And uh, that's in Genesis chapter number 11. But what God does, look at verse uh, 1. And the whole earth was of one language, one speech. That's easy. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found in the plain land of Shinar, that's Babylon, present day Iraq uh, is about where that, that is over there. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, slime, uh, uh, had they for mortar. They said, go, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. Let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad among the face of the whole earth. Now watch, verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. They all have one language, and this they begin to do. And nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down. Let us. Notice the, the Lord said, let us go down. Plural pronoun. That's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Let us go down. Uh, and there confounded their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence from the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. Babylon. Babel. You say, where'd Babel come from? Well, all right, get the picture, okay? <coughs> Let me just tell you the story. Everybody's speaking the same language. I don't know what it was. Don't know. Could have been Hebrew. Not sure. But everybody was speaking the same language. Everybody was working. Everybody was building. Somebody's on the ladder. Somebody's bringing a load of bricks up here. And all of a sudden, God comes down. All of these people are working everywhere. And he just snaps his finger. And everybody starts <coughs> speaking a different language. So they start, they were understanding one another. And then they continue to talk. Their languages change. And nobody can understand one another. And so it halts the process because nobody can understand one another. And so then, you have this little group over here, they get together because they can understand each other and they're all speaking French. This group over here, they all get together and find out, hey, they all can understand one another and they're speaking Spanish. you got a group back over there, they're speaking Latin and all them will get together and they start gathering up because they understand one another. The reason God did this, I'm just telling you about God. I'm not telling you about the society today. I'm telling you about what God does. God's intention is not for everybody to get together. Right. Now the world tells you, the world tells you, oh, let's all get together and let's just all just, that's what happened in the Tower of Babel. And when men get together, trouble starts. You ain't got to like it. It's the Bible. Don't get mad at me. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you what it says. And he disperses. Separate. Did you know what God told... Let me just give you another example of it. Uh, God, Jesus told the disciples, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Right? You know what them the birds did? They stayed in Jerusalem and wouldn't leave. He said... Separate. You can't preach the gospel of the whole world in your backyard. <laughs> Go you into all the world. They congregated in Jerusalem. You know what God did? You're going to think this is mean of God. God calls persecution in Jerusalem for the Christians. So why? They would 
Amen. He told you to separate. Spread the gospel all over the world. And uh, his intention is not for man to get together, it's to separate. And uh, so anyway, that's the story of the Tower of Babel. And that's where we get Babylon. And that is the fall of man. That ends the dispensation of human government. So each one of these things ends. This one ends in a fall. This one ends in a flood. This one ends the Tower of Babel. Destruction. Guess what happens now? In Genesis chapter 12, a new dispensation starts, and it's called the dispensation of the patriarchs. You say, who are the patriarchs? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Uh, let's see. Genesis chapter number 12. Look at Genesis chapter 12. Now let me give you this. From, from chapter 12 all the way to 50. Chapter 12 all the way to 50. Let me give you this real quick. Chapters 12 through 24 is the story of Abraham. 12 through 24 is the story of Abraham. Chapters 24 through 27 is the story of Isaac. 24 through 27 is the story of Isaac. Then 28 through 36 is the story of Jacob. 28 through 36 is the story of Jacob. And then 37 through 50 is the story of Joseph. And that will carry you through the, the end of uh, the book of Genesis. And that will carry you halfway through the, the, the Old Testament. Does everybody got that? Need to repeat it one more time. 12 through 24, the story of Abraham. 24 through 27, the story of uh, Isaac. 28 through 36 is the story of Jacob. 37 through 50 is the story of Joseph. And who started it all was a fellow by the name of Abraham. He's found in Genesis chapter number 12 and verse 1. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kingdom, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And this is where it all started with a fellow by the name of Abraham. Abraham, now get this. Abraham was the first Jew. There were no Jews before Father Abraham. This is the whole purpose of Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, notice, Genesis chapter 12 is a governmental number, but it is the number you got 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples. The number 12 is in relation to the nation of Israel, that, that government. Uh, Genesis chapter number 12, God calls out a man by the name of Abram. He had not changed his name yet, but uh, his name was Abram. He's the first Jew. He says, come out, and I'm taking you to a land. I'm going to make your name great. You go over to the Holy Land right now, you mention the man named Abraham, it doesn't matter if they're Muslim, Christian, or Jew. Every one of them know who Abraham is. God said He's going to name, make His name great, and He did. He said He's going to make Him a great nation, and He did. The land that the nation of Israel, that belongs to the nation of Israel, it's a whole lot bigger than what is, what is called the nation of Israel today. Uh, and it gives you the, the dimensions of it uh, uh, from the river Euphrates. Uh, uh, anyway, it gives you three dimensions of it, and it's sort of it's short up in a pyramid shape. Uh, sort of in a pyramid shape. Uh, there's <coughs> three sides to it, and that's the land. God gave them that land. He promised it to them, and they're going to get it. You say they're having trouble with it right now. I understand, but when it when the kingdom comes in, you mark her down. The Jews will be in the land and they will have a whole lot more land than what they've got today. 
Uh, God made a promise. He will keep it. Right now, He's not dealing with the nation of Israel. Right now, He's dealing with the church. And that's us. When we're out of here, He starts back dealing with the nation of Israel again. And He's going to bring them into a land. And that was the promise in Genesis chapter number 12. And He starts it with a man by the name of Abraham. And Abraham uh, does a lot of different things, obviously. And uh, uh, look at, uh, let me show you this. Look at uh, 12, no, 13 and 12. 13 and 12. <coughs> Abram, Abram had a nephew by the name of Lot. And, um, you know, they're going around together and all of a sudden it just gets a little too big, the cattle and all of that. So Abraham says, look, you know, sometimes your family, <laughs> it's nice to see them at Christmas and Thanksgiving. But sometimes you just got to separate for a minute. Catch your breath. So Abraham calls Lot and goes, look, this ain't working. I mean, you sweat. So look, anywhere you want to go, I'll make you this deal. You go anywhere you want to go. Take your group and go. And I'll take whatever's left. And so Lot picks out the best. And he looks towards Sodom. Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham takes the rest. Look at verse uh, 12, 13, 12. Abraham, Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his uh, tent toward Sodom. Now look at 13. 13, 13. 13 is the number of... <coughs> Count how many, how many words is in the verse. Take a while, I guess. But that's probably... A coincidence. And look what the 13 words say. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord had said. You see that? You say, ah, 13 ain't the number of rebellion. It's not. Look at, look at chapter 14, verse 4. Twelve years they served that fellow. And in the 13th year, they did what? Rebellion. Well, look at that. 13th is number what? I didn't say it. The Bible said it. And there's 13 words in, thir in verse 13 of chapter 13. And it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. A rebellious city. Um, <coughs> uh, look at, uh, let's see. Well, you got Abraham and all of this. <clears throat> now, let me tell you this story while we're moving on. God promised, uh, go to chapter 18, we'll be there in a minute. God promised Abraham a son. And He said, you're going to have a son. Now, stay, follow this story right here. Because this is where history, we're still paying for this one right here. God told Abraham, you're going to have a son, you and Sarah are going to have a boy, and it's going to continue. His name's going to be Isaac, and you go, I mean, you I mean, it's going to pass on down to him. Well, they waited, waited, waited. You know how sometimes when the Lord tells you something, you can't wait. And you think you can help God out. And so Sarah, she's probably up in her 90s. You know, hey, there's still hope for some, some of y'all. All right? <laughs> and uh, she's in her 90s. She said, there ain't no way I'm having a kid at 90. <coughs> Abraham, why don't you go in to Hagar? Hagar is a lady uh, that was a handmaid. She was a, a lady there uh, that... Uh, help clean the house, whatever they did. And they said, won't you go into her? She's a whole lot younger and uh, have a child with her. And so that happened. What happened is they had a boy by the name of Ishmael. Ishmael. Chapter 15 about where Ishmael was born. Ishmael. Now, now stay with me. 
Ishmael was born, God says, that's not, well, that's not my plan. It's not my plan. I told you I was going to give you, you and Sarah, going to have a kid. <coughs> well, they had Ishmael. Well, later on, God, can, if God said it, it's going to happen. So God had Abraham and Sarah had a boy. Guess what his name was? Isaac. Isaac was born after Ishmael. You with me? Born after Ishmael. The Ishmaelites are the Arabians and your Muslim descent come from Ishmael. Okay? Your Jews come from Isaac. Now follow me. Who's fighting over that temple mount today? Muslims and the Jews. Both of them say, my daddy is who? Abraham and that temple mount belongs to me. The Muslims say, that belongs to that, uh, Abraham's our daddy. The Jew says, yes, but you're not the promised seed. You were had from another woman. The promised seed, the land, the temple mount belongs to the offspring of Abraham and Sarah. Not Abraham and, Ish and, 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 and Hagar. You understand? So these two boys, half-brothers, have been fighting ever since. We are still dealing with it today because of the decision Abraham made to disobey God and not wait on God and that's what we're paying for today. Now, you're saying, alright, the Muslims, Abraham is their daddy. What's wrong with them having a portion of that? Okay, let me show you something. Look at Genesis. Uh, well, I don't know. Alright, I think got ahead of myself, but you hold the phone for a minute. Look at Genesis 22. I didn't over, I didn't jumped all over Sodom and Gomorrah. I want to tell you about that too. Look at Genesis 22. Who was born first? Ishmael. Then Isaac was born. Right? 22. It come to pass after these things, God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, Behold, here I am. He said, Take now thy son, thy Now hang on a minute. Either there's a mistake in the Bible or God don't recognize the Muslim nation. Amen. Y'all see that? So you can say, ah, you're just being mean. To that. No, we're not. They're not entitled to anything of that land. None. You say, well, their dad is Abraham. It don't matter. God says, take thy son Isaac, thy only son. Amen. Did Abraham have another son? Yes. Did God see him? Mm -mm. God didn't even recognize him. Look, come over. And I'm going to tell you, he's going to look come over on too. And the kingdom. The descendants of Isaac and Jacob are going to inherit that land out in the kingdom. There won't be a Muslim uh, to inherit that. I don't care who the daddy is. Now do you see... This was in Genesis 15. Do you see we are still paying for a decision that was made back in the book of Genesis? <coughs> and now you understand what's going on over there in the Middle East. What is it? Two half-brothers fight. They've been fighting ever since. And will be. Until the Lord comes back and says, Hey, you can go ahead. Isaac is getting the land. Now, I sort of jumped ahead of myself, and I apologize for that. But anyway, uh, Genesis 19, you got the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Most of you know that story. I'm going to spend a lot of time with that. Um, but here, I'll, I'll do more to show you this. Uh, look at Genesis 18. You say, how do you know Abraham was a Jew? Well, I'll show you. Verse 1. 
Verse 23 of 18. And Abraham drew near. Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou destroy it? So on and so forth. Look down at verse 28. Peradventure there shall lack five of the 50. So we got them down to 45. All right, let's see. Got him all the way down to what? What was the last? He got 20? What was it? I don't remember. 10? Got him down to 10? Started at 50. Jewed him down to 10. <laughs> I get a thumbs up on that one. <laughs> Joe just got it. Y'all pray for him. Mm -hmm. Did you have to explain it to Tasha? Oh, okay. Now in 19, in 19, you got the two angels that come uh, and uh, sit at the, at the tent door and told them to get out. Lot and his family. And they lingered. They, they wasted away or what lingered wouldn't get out. And then you know the story. Fire came down from heaven and uh, destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know what it was destroyed for? This is not politically correct. And you didn't come to this school to be politically correct. They destroyed it for homosexuality. Right. And that's what it was destroyed for. And uh, fire came down from heaven and devoured it. Uh, because of that. Now... Uh, and then look at, uh, let's see, let's go back to, let's go to Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Let me show you this. I don't know what time it is. I almost break time. I mean, I got time to show you this and then we'll uh, move on. Take a break. Genesis 22. I want you to notice this. Make, make note of this. Genesis 22, Isaac is, is offered for a sacrifice. <coughs> Isaac is offered for a sacrifice. All right. And then in Genesis 23, verse 1. And Sarah was a hundred and seven and twenty-seven years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in that place. In verse 2, you see that? Abraham, wife, Sarah, dies after Isaac is offered up as a sacrifice. Alright, you get you still y'all with me still. Then in 24, Isaac gets a bride, a Gentile bride. A Gentile bride I, uh, in, in Genesis 24. Uh, her name was Rebecca. Then in Genesis 25, verse 1, then again, Abraham took a wife. Her name was Keturah. Keturah was a Jew. Alright, what y'all got? 22, 23, 24, and 25, right? Isaac for a sacrifice in 22. 23, Sarah, Abraham's wife, his, Jew, his Jewish wife, dies. 24, Isaac gets a Gentile bride. The son gets a Gentile bride. The son of Abraham gets a Gentile bride. And then after that, Abraham marries again another Jewish woman named Keturah. Y'all with me? Y'all got it? Follow me. Isaac is offered up as a sacrifice in Genesis 22. 
in Genesis 23, Israel dies. Sarah, a Jew, dies in 24. Or 23, rather. In 24, Isaac the son gets a what? A Gentile bride. And after 24, the Gentile bride, Abraham marries another, what kind of wife? A Jew named Keturah. There you go. Amen. Y'all see that? Isaac's a picture of Jesus Christ the Son. Abraham is a picture of God the Father. Abraham in the Old Testament has a Jewish wife named Sarah. Abraham has a son named Isaac that's offered up. When he offers his son up, the Jews go off the scene. The Jews today is a dead nation. Amen. You say, no, they're over there running around. I understand. But they're a dead nation. Their eyes are closed. They're blinded. They cannot see. They're like Sarah, dead. And then in the next chapter, Isaac, the son, gets a Gentile bride. As soon as 24 is over and the Gentile bride's gone, Abraham marries another Jew wife named Keturah and goes on into the kingdom. All that right there is in Genesis 22, 23, 24, and 25. Does everybody see that? Yes? Um, I have a question about uh, the Jewish, um, you know, how basically, like, because you said that Abraham was the first Jew. Is yes. That, that you said that, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and so in the past, like you were, they became Jewish based on um, just birth. Like they were, they were born into the Jewish faith. Is that correct? From, like, from, from Abraham. From Abraham, Abraham on? Yes. Okay. And uh, the, the covenant of circumcision was started. The boys, they would take the boys. Uh, if you would uh, have the Jewish descent, you would take the boys on the eighth day. The reason they take them on the eighth day is because the blood clotted better on the eighth day. And they would circumcise those boys. That was a covenant, a physical covenant with um, uh, all the descendants uh, of Abraham. And uh, that was part of the covenant is the circumcision. <coughs> they did it uh, as, um, of course, today when you do that, you got medicine that makes the blood clot. But anyway, they did it on the eighth day. If you remember, Jesus was taken to the temple on the eighth day uh, uh, when he was eight days old. And that's when Jesus was taken to the temple uh, for that purpose. Yes. So then, um, where did Keturah come from? Like, with you know, how did they become a Jews then at that point? Because like, if Keturah was a Jew and Abraham was the first Jew, where is where is that from? Okay, hang on. I tell you what, let's take a break right there, and let me find what I need to find. And we'll come back in about 10 or 15 minutes.